on today's episode of Why Can't the Workbench Ever Be Empty? We give an old Pro Max 700 a thorough once over in revival. A chainsaw! What? So, this dusty old Pro Max 700 is sitting here in need of some repairs and two. We're going to give this thing a solid tune up and once over and then compare it to the modified Pro Mac 1010. This saw might have, what, 15 or somewhere around there, CC advantage. Now I have worked on this saw before. The carburetor needed a quick goings through and that was about all it took to get it back in action. Now it's come back with even more carburetor problems and probably a few other things as well. I'm sure the fuel lines have been hardening up over time with that ethanol fuel. Yeah, that fuel line is harder than Tetris at level 87. We'll give that a quick air compressor bath. Inside of the carburetor looks pretty good though. Yeah, you can see there, there's a gap where the fuel line goes into the tank and that has hardened up and shrunk over time. So if you were to put fuel in here right now, it would be seeping into there and leaking for a bit, and at least until that fuel line would re-expand. Overall, the structure of this thing looks really similar, similar to the 1010. Should be pretty easy to get it all ripped apart. Overall, a pretty clean saw. Aftermarket plug but it doesn't look like it was burning that bad. You can still see some cross hatching on the cylinder walls. Not bad, not bad. Piston is pretty clean. And out comes the Walbro SDC. Back in the good old days of carbs when zero emissions restrictions you can just tune it your own free will see if we can't get that fuel line out of there and perfect don't need any special fuel lines either just a good old piece of Tigon and while you may be able to bring this around soaking it in some PB blaster this saw is actually going to get put to use so we're going to order a good quality rebuild kit that comes with that new diaphragm and some other gaskets. So now that we're going to have to get some parts on order for the carburetor and wait for those to come in, this is a perfect opportunity for my favorite portion of any build. The stage where you can just kind of throw it in a box and forget about it for a while. Don't hate, procrastinate. I mean the best type of procrastination is when you're forced into it. So after waiting for a while, we got some parts in the mail. Finally ready to start putting this carburetor back together. I wonder who worked on this before. One of those screws is not like the other. One thing I noticed on this carb was the old needle and seat. There's actually a nice manual available free online at Walbro that shows you how to set the spring lever arm here set the level it's supposed to be just flush with these two tabs here the old one was sitting just a little bit below these two levels here also try and remember to take this screen out of the fuel inlet usually leave it in there forget about it spray it with compressed air and then launch it in the low orbit never to be found again a good multicolor flannel is the best way to clean these needles out. Stacking gaskets like cash. Now, one area of concern that you always have to keep an eye on, any older saw or engine in particular, is the crank seals. The old Pro Mac 10 that I was working on, it had a pretty much completely destroyed crank seal here, although the saw was still running. But a lot of times you end up with a saw that it runs in consistently. You'll kind of tune the carb in, run it for a while. Next thing you know, it's running a bit lean 
or kind of rich and you can never quite get things dialed in right and maybe the harder that the saw gets the more it keeps running off there's a chance that it could be the crank seals now you can sort of pressure test these things if you block off the exhaust I know one of the ways I usually end up just doing it is filling the crankcase up with a heavy mixture of gas and oil you can usually dump it down the carb kind of tilt it until you know that you've got gasoline filling up, filled up in here and just let it sit for an hour or two and if you get gas start seeping through and drain it out on your workbench well you know the culprit and bad crank seals aren't a death sentence for any motor but you definitely got to give the bearings a closer once over especially if dirt's been getting sucked in through there it could also be an indicator of just a lot of hours or miles and running it out lean with a bad crank seal it end up scuffing your piston too. Let's see what the old spark arrestor looks like. Huh, that's interesting. It's like a reed valve. So we got the exhaust port exiting at the bottom of the cylinder, coming through this passage here, and then there's a diverter plate with a port in the center. Bit more of a muffler than the old Pro Mac 10 had. I'm sure it's still not quiet though. Might have to do some research and some experimenting to see if we can get rid of this spring loaded flapper reed valve here. Let's just add more restriction to the exhaust. Choking out the horsepower. Now, most any fuel line that's the right size will work. The question is, how long is it going to work for? And especially on saws like this that use the fuel line as the sealing mechanism going through a bulkhead or the tank, also on weed eaters and stuff, really try and stick to the name brand Good Stuff Fuel Line. It just seems to last longer before shrinking and kind of getting hard like this old fuel line has. You'll let something sit for a season or two without using it and the fuel line just shrinks down and next thing you know you try and fill up the tank and you got gas going everywhere. Can't be having that with gas prices today. Definitely one of the simpler setups for a fuel line. It's got a nice tight seal there. Trying to get this fuel line onto fittings that are one size larger than they should be sometimes requires a bit of finesse. No hose clamps required there. Not going to buy a new air filter for this thing, so after the quick rebuild, we sort of rebent the tabs and the ends here of the sealing gasket to make sure it fits down below this ridge. But as you can see by those witness marks on there, this thing was getting pushed down and sort of sandwiched in between uh, the ridge at the bottom when it's supposed to sit up inside there, like that. And you could tell that the filter wasn't quite doing its job by the amount of sawdust and a little bit of debris that it was setting down inside the carburetor box. That should fit nice and snug the whole way down there before you really have to tighten up the nut. Tightened up some loose bolts on the old top handle. She's solid as a rock now. Still got some bar and chain oil dripping from somewhere. We won't worry about that. Time now for the 40 second restoration. Oh yeah, she's coming around now. Now the chain, well, looked like it was cutting through some cinder blocks, but we tried to rehab it best we could to give it a, a good fair shot at getting through them logs. Wow, are the inside drive teeth sharp? Yeah, that's a good looking saw. We just need to add the, the one big secret performance modification.
the compression on this thing. It's got quite a bit. Can definitely uh, tell why you need the decompression button. We gotta see what kind of PSIs this thing gets. I think it'll probably do. Now from what I've been able to gather about these saws, the Pro Max 700 was a later variant of the 70cc Pro Series. The 710 was the earlier style. Some say it had a little bit more power. It was a little bit lighter. Don't think it had a chain brake on it. But these 700s seem to have a really good reputation as far as reliability and longevity goes. And even with a larger improved muffler, they're still pretty loud. Got some good old 28 to 1 clots. Oh no. There's gasoline seeping out of the, the seam here where the tank splits apart. Well, tell you what, we're not going to fix that right now. Luckily we didn't put a whole lot of fuel in there. And hopefully that gasket just swells back up once it gets soaked a little bit. See what happens. Try to not hit the Thundercat. Well, that was... That's a little bit of an excessive amount of smoke. That's a lot of oil that appears to be coming out of the exhaust. Not sure if that was gathered in there up over time or if that's barn chain oil that was somehow getting into the crankcase. I mean we've got we've got oil, gas, and stuff just spewing out of everywhere. We'll fire it up again. Maybe. It's a hybrid. It's running on gas and oil. Give her some idle. Try and not cut that. Everything's coming apart. Back to the shop. So there was copious amounts of oil coming out of the exhaust. No oil going through the automatic oiler system. We had to keep priming the plunger to eventually get some oil on the chain. Pull cord pulled out. The air filter cover was about ready to quick disattach. 
we've got gasoline leaking from the entire perimeter here but it sounds cool so I was able to dig out the remainder of the pool cord we're gonna add a little bit of length to that when we put a new one in this was fairly easy all you had to do was wrap the rope around the pulley and then kind of hold uh, a turn or two attention on this and then feed it back through the handle all right well let's try this again Starting fluid time. Hmm. Gonna richen up the lower. Quarter turn right off the bat. Time to go put it in some wood. down a little bit on the idle lean it up a little bit on the high leave the low where it's at yeah she's burning it off now
know. I think the old 700's definitely got it in the torque department. The 1010 really likes to cut when you get it wound up high. But this thing would definitely be a lot easier cutting firewood all day. It is true. Sometimes there's no replacement for displacement. Kind of impressed with the old 700. That thing really, it's got the torque and it just, it, everything's smooth. It's stock, I guess you could say. And it was kind of a good contrast running the old modified 1010 up against it. And I would love to see the 1010 run as good or better than that 700. It still is going to need some tweaks. So we're going to have to work that 1010 over a little bit. Try and get some more down low torque out of it. Or maybe tweak the timing and some other stuff on it to try and get it to run a little bit better. Thanks for watching. And I don't know, hopefully you're not like me and starting to catch a little bit of yellow fever. Because I keep liking these uh, old Macs the more I work on them. Apparently my shop has become a no-kill shelter for chainsaws.